Well, we've got water for Buttercup there. I've just walked over to the other side of the allotment and uh, got water here for the chickens. My God, I need some get going to keep fit or something. Um, breathing's atrocious today. It's minus one. Um, just got, just had to go to the car as well to get another pack of bird food for the feeders. I've got the the um, the seed balls there, but uh, yeah, I've run out of um, seeds in the the shed, so I've had to go and get another bag. Um, there they are. What are you doing, Buttercup? I know what you're after. Yep. Now, it, you've got water in there, so why are you trying... Oh, God. She's killing me. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to put some food in there and them two feeders there. It's hard. They've got half full. They're not empty. And they've got the sea balls, but... Yeah, I'm going to sort the chickens out now. God, God. It never ends. <laughs> me and my bloody menagerie of um, birds, cats and everything else on the allotment. Yeah, she's really enjoying that. That reminds me. Got some treats for the birds here. Yeah. These are uh, tea cakes. Lots of currants in them. We'll come back to these potatoes in a bit and uh, we'll come to these corn in a minute. These are by the way a golden fleece and I dried them out in my greenhouse at home. So I'm going to be separating them. Uh, I'll show you my chicken my potatoes. I've got some fleece there and it get the bubble wrap. We've got everything set up here. So yeah, all this is um, going to be doing this today. I just realised something, I could go and warm the water up in the community room and uh, fill that water bottle up again, get it nice and toaster. In fact, what I'm going to do now, put it in there, that, warm that one up. So she normally sleeps in that one during the day and in the evening she curls up in this one here. So I want to keep it dry and I don't want it damp. You know, this stuff gets damp, gets on the chest, it's going to cost me a fortune at the vet. You got water there, you numbed. <laughs> oh well. Right, I'm gonna get on with what I've got to get on with, and then I'll be Both right back. Are all topped up now. A few seed balls here. Uh, new bag of uh, seed. Let's get another bag of them. I'm running short. I need a bag of them balls as well. But uh, yeah, um, buttercups fed, watered. Wild birds are watered, they was done last, and then the chickens, they were done as well. They've got water, food and everything in there, so yeah, minus two it is today at the moment. It's bloody freezing. Right, get this lot away, and then we can carry on with what we're doing. Have I even sat down and you want to jump up? Hey? Hi guys, welcome back to Allotment Diggers. Well, you probably just see me feeding buttercup there and the cat and the chickens has been bitterly cold this week. Wind's been atrocious. Uh, okay, come on then. Ooh. <laughs> Look here, covering my pants in muck. Take a seat. Got your lipstick on? Hmm? Yeah, she's got lipstick on. As I was saying, it's bitterly cold. The wind has been a terrible, it's caused a lot of damage. Um, we've had all sorts thrown at us. Um, we managed to complete the, the community room shop. That's that's done now. I'll take it over there and show you that. Um, we've uh, been chitting the potatoes. I'll show you me doing that. Um, we've actually been doing an experiment. Um, got some golden fleece corn after all. Um, I was talking to, to the missus the other day, and I said I need to get some golden fleece. She says, "Why? You've got a load of them in the, the in the greenhouse in the garden." So they're up on the shelf, dried out. So why don't you use them? 
and I realised um, we we have no space in the freezers. Uh, both the freezers were full, so uh, what we did, um, I put as she, she suggested, I put them in the greenhouse to dry them out, and that's what I did. Anyway, we've got a couple of well, we've got a few cobs here, so you're going to see me um, taking the seeds off them, and we're going to do an experiment. Uh, there's a few other clips, a few nightmares, what have happened on the allotments this week, I'll show you. So I think what we're going to do, uh, we'll start off with, um, with the sweet corn, so let me show you. Well guys, you join me in the front greenhouse, and um, these... Uh, these are the, the, the corn what I um, grew last year, they're called Golden Fleece. Now what I did, I put about eight or nine of these in my um, shed at home not my shed, my greenhouse and dried them out and um, well all you do to actually collect the, the seeds is just run your fingers over the top of them like that and try not to drop them in the compost that they and they just But I think it'd be better to do them in this one here. So yeah, you just rub your fingers over them and they just fall off like that. Now these golden fleece, um, I think you get about 30 of them in a pack and they cost you, I think they're about £1.50, £2. <laughs> and uh, well, you can clearly see there's absolutely hundreds here, so save myself a few quid and they're all completely dried out there we go so that's a, um, another load Well, what I've got to make sure I don't get any of these mixed up in the, the compost which you haven't so there we go absolutely wonderful all dried out and ready to go thought I'd save myself a few quid uh, there's the husks let's well take them last few off why not I give all my friends these. Um, yep, yeah, this is the cheap way to, to garden. Collect your own seed. Well, guys, you join me in the, the front greenhouse. Uh, what we're doing today, we're doing a test. And uh, the test is I've got some sweet corn that I've actually. Um, collected from my own corn what I grew last year you probably see me splitting them up there they are and these are the corn in question and what we're going to do use this dibber here and uh, we're going to do a full tray now this is like I say it's a test I'll probably end up giving these ones away um, but what I'm want to know is will they germinate these seeds and um, well that's what we're doing guys so we've got clover multi-purpose here uh, that's what we're so we're going to sow them into got me all do me alls uh, we got I'm nearly done. What I'm going to do as well, I'm going to put a couple of seeds per per station. Now I've got that up there. There's where there's two there. The reason why I'm doing two um, is because I hopefully I want them all to germinate. I will split them out and double them up. Uh, give them to, but these ones I won't be growing these ones myself I'm just just curious to see if they germinate 
They should do. Um, yeah, we, we've got a pile of these. I've still got a couple more of these um, cobs at home. And um, it'd be interesting. It's oh, a big one. Put a small one there and there. But it'd be interesting to see whether they actually germinate. Absolute, I've got absolutely hundreds here, so I could just put one per station, but I'm not. I'm doing two. You watch, every one of them will probably germinate. Won't be a problem. We'll, we'll, we can split them up, and we do split them up. I'll be giving them to my friends. No one's done. Nearly done. Yeah, this is something for nothing. Two more. Right. So these, like I say, we've just you just see me um breaking these off the us. We've got a pile of them. So they come from there. There's a few left on there, but you know. So I'll put these to one side. Just push them down a little bit. Make sure they're all at the bottom. It's about inch down. These will take about a couple of weeks for them to to actually germinate you start seeing them have another one of these need to clean these out this is a uh, tepid water it's water which uh, has been in here for about a month um, all the chlorines out of the uh, dissolved out of the water now But you've got to get them seeds soaking wet for them to start to germinate. And as you see there, what's happened is the the soil has actually filled around them. But what I'm going to do is put a bit more soil over the top. So these are golden fleece. Let me just tidy that up. There we go. That looks better. Right. A bit more water. So these are golden fleece, uh, propagator lid, just putting a bit of water in there. What we want to do is turn this like a vivarium. Uh, make sure that lid, that, that vent is closed and as the, the water warms up it will come up to the top of the um, propagator. It'll cool down from the vapour, turn back into water, drop back down, so I don't have to keep um, watering them. But we'll keep an eye on these. I'm, I'm really interested to know whether these are going to all germinate. If they do germinate, we'll crack it because this is what we're going to be growing this year, but not these ones, I don't think. We wait with baited breath. I'll put them a bit high up in the greenhouse and we'll, we'll leave them. Um, so when it's, when it's warmer, as I the higher you go the warmer it is but yeah um some golden fleece
sweet corn. Um, the trail begins, and like I say, we, that's what we've um, harvested them from. And we've got absolutely hundreds more when we need them. So the sweet corn you see me doing that um, experiment with there is the, um, the golden fleece, and uh, we've done it in the clover. Uh, hopefully, um, they'll, they'll germinate, and when they do, what we'll do, we'll do a load more. I'll give them ones away. I might even use them, I don't know. Uh, we, we've got plans to doing a lot of uh, corn this year um, to, to beat them bloody squirrels. Absolute pain they are. So I'll watch your space with that. But uh, anyway, um, the next thing I'm going to show you is my chitty me potatoes. So we've got six varieties. I've got these cool boxes, what I bought from um, the car boot at Warrington, they're only 10 pence each. They, however, the cartons, I've got trays of them, I don't know what, how much they cost. I will give them a load of trays, so, and they come in handy, as you will see. Well guys, today, um, oh, we're chitting these potatoes, I've, I've done five of them, I've been on my last one now doing the Swift. So we've done, um, we've done Maris Piper, um, we've done King Edwards, we've done Swift Desiree, Penton Javelin and this is the last one this is the Swift these are first earlies and um, basically what we do we leave that label inside the uh, the carton and uh, we cut through this I could have put a better pair of scissors absolutely useless anyway uh, we don't we don't throw these things away we keep these because these come in handy for hanging uh, melons and stuff like that but yeah chips so there's the bottom of the plant there's the the, the umbilical cord um which goes on uh, from the mother plant and as you can see we've got chips there already and it's just getting the umbilical cord i could do with taking them out of here so that's what we're going to do it's easier for me to get them in Again, bottom of the plant. Bottom. Quite big potatoes, these. <laughs> so there's the top, there's the umbilical right on the bottom. Umbilical chips. We'll get these covered over in a bit. Just, like I said, I'm just working out which is which is the which is top, which is bottom. I've got three more to go. Put in here, and then what we'll start thinking about is putting the fleece around them. We've got some bubble wrap as well. right so we got these here got the bubble wrap oh sorry got the the fleece the bubble wraps over there and if you heard that meow yeah she's there and she she's watching what i'm doing she has been screaming half all the way through the video um the other video so I've, I've, this is the last one if she keeps her gob shut we'll be fine but um yeah all these now i'm going to wrap them in bubble wrap and, and fleece so the fleece will go over them first I'm going to show you them set up in the the back greenhouse because that's where these are all going but yeah these these are fantastic you can like I say you can stack all your potatoes one on top of each other there we go they're all stacked together absolute awesome so, I'm a different handle, you can see them all there, there's six varieties, uh, get the bubble wrap round them, we'll get them into the back greenhouse and um, then we'll leave them to chit away, we'll keep an eye on them, um, in another, probably another four weeks we'll be putting a few of these into buckets in the front greenhouse, uh, getting them off to an early start. Right, onwards and upwards, I'll show you where they are in a moment when we got the, get them into the back greenhouse. Well guys, 
They, these are the spuds, they're like pigs in blankets. <laughs> they got fleece underneath the bubble wrap, so there's no condensation can drop onto the potatoes. I don't know get damp and go soggy however you you do need to just give them a bit of a spray to start off with keep an eye on them but they should be fine here and like i said they're in the greenhouse along with all my um my rosemary bushes oh they will be i took the top off that one as an experiment to see the there's bush out on that one and that's what they're starting to do now so that's uh I've got to get down there and do it with them others. Yeah, the glass does need cleaning. Uh, this can all be done um, later on in the uh, in the uh, couple of, uh, another month or so. I'll come in here with my me, um, me jet wash and hit these and clean them. But most of it's on the outside anyway. But yeah, here we go. Potatoes all chitted up and ready to rock and roll. So the fleece um, and the bubble wrap is wrapped round them now they're in the the back greenhouse as you saw there and uh, they'll chit away nicely um hopefully the the, the optics on this um isn't playing up um the, the the sun's right behind me here at the moment and i've got an horrible feeling i might have to do this video again before we get it up posted um yeah as i was saying earlier this week the weather was atrocious i mean it's been up and down we've had everything thrown at us this week the snow's just melting away now but uh, we had snow um you might see on the the walk around at the end of the video what it looked like uh well what, what it looks like now anyway but um yeah the wind was atrocious and this this is what the wind actually caused well the wind was absolutely devastating last night and as you can see it's destroyed mark's greenhouse here absolute oh this is very sad um, look at the state of this. Oh dear, I think it can all be put back, to, uh, screwed back together. But um, it needs rope round it to hold it together because this wind's just going to blow it all over. Look at the state of this, this is so sad. Brand new greenhouse, this as well. Right, I'm going to have to notify him and let him know what's happened. He will be absolutely devastated. This is Lindsay's greenhouse, which ain't looking too good. It's lost some panels and a the door there. Yeah, this wind, I didn't realise how, how strong it was yesterday. But um, it's played havoc around the allotment. Everywhere I'm looking is, is damage. Someone's lost a grow house. This is uh, where the, this is the old uh, chicken compound. Um, we're re well, we're stripping everything out and redoing it all. Um, all this has all got to be burnt. But uh, yeah, we've acquired um, someone's grow house inside the uh, the poly inside the compound. What a cup! I'm just coming along here, and I can see panels missing out of. Uh, Jim's greenhouse there. His uh, polytunnel is collapsed there. He's got a door missing off here. Oh dear. It's not looking good. You know, I'll continue walking around assessing the damage and um, notifying every bugger. Well, Yvonne's greenhouse looks like it's listing slightly, been lifted up. Um, I said I didn't realise this wind was that strong, but uh, at least she's still got all the glass in it, which is uh, which, which is okay. So my mate Mark, he's um, he, he come down. I sort of rung him up. The greenhouse is almost back to normal. Um, the the front of it, he's still working on it. He's not got the um, the framing. He's waiting to get some Loctite for the the screws. It was the screws that come undone and caused all that damage. We still don't know um, who the grow house belongs to, which she saw in the video. Um, Yvonne's greenhouse is still tilting and there's a few gra uh, greenhouses with glass missing out over the other side of the allotments as you saw as well. But yeah, pretty much we got away with it. But the winds on here, I tell everybody, the winds are that strong on here at times. You've, you've got to batten everything down. And then what happened then after the winds and the snow? the frost and I come on the other day 
and um, well, let me show you what I have to do. Well, this is a wonderful burst. We we'll have to bring the car around with all the tools in and do it. <laughs> Absolute pain in the ass. So I've tightened the bracket up, the, the uh, Jubilee clip up. Now what I'm doing is waiting for um, Mike to give us a ring back to tell us that he's turned the uh, the stop tap back on. Oh, well, just one last check on the uh, the water main. It's okay. It's stopped. With... <laughs> it was like spraying out everywhere when I when I come on this morning. I looked up and I could see spray coming out and I knew straight away what had happened. It was a burst. But anyway, it's all fixed for now. But I need a piece of that. I need them and them. Uh, actually, I've got the, the 12 mil. I just need the three quarter and I need a reducer. So that's what I need. I need a piece of that uh, three quarter. I need about, I'd say about 18 inches of it. And uh, what I can do is um, extend that pipe a bit longer because that's it's not long enough really. What I do is I'd eat that pipe up and get some boiling water. I'd eat that pipe up, soften it, and then push the pipe right down it. That'll solve all the problems then. But now it's just a quick fix. And as you can see, we've still got water. I put the cones back, my car's down there, it shouldn't be here on the back, but I've had to use the car to fix this. I certainly wasn't going to drag all the tools over, so anyway, the ground's solid enough for to drive on, but close the road off because of the um because it was too soft. Anyway, see you in a bit guys. A burst at the top of the allotments. I still need to do that properly. I need um I need a three-quarter copper pint. I need a reducer and obviously I'm going to need um, another uh, 12 milli copper pipe as well and then I can do the job. It's, it's, it's secure, it's working, the water's on at the moment. You can't really turn the water off because of the chickens and the ducks. So this is why they, they, they keep blowing. Um, but yeah, we fixed it. I've got to tell you guys, I've been washing my hand, this hand here, for the last couple of days. Um, what, what I had to do was put my hand outside down into where the stop tap is to turn it off the you know the stop tap it's outside the allotments and what someone had done the dirty buggers had dropped a load of our uh, um, dog feces down the hole and I put my hand in and yeah I should have done the lottery but I didn't and for two days I've been washing my hands scrubbing this hand until it bleeds but um, yeah so that was another job um, I had to do a uh, bit of good news though, we've uh, completed the community room um, electrics and I'm going to take it over there now. We did a, I've done a little video to put up on the, the Facebook group uh, to show people what they need to do. We don't want them to leave the lights on, we don't want them to leave the electrics on. We have got a, a remote control switch next to the door which turns everything off and that has to be turned off when they finish. So anyway, I've got this little clip to show everybody how to, to do the electrics. You see a few other things. We've got a new um, table and chairs in there as well. It still needs a bit of a sweep out, but um, the lights and everything are working. So let oh me guys, show you. as you can see, we've got the uh, microwave in here now, toaster and kettle. Um, here's a switch which works the lights. Once you've, if you turn the lights on, you do not leave the community room until they're turned off. Now to operate all these, you have to hit that switch when you've finished using these that switch has to be turned off okay do not leave it on now come over and um, you can like do your beans and what have you oh God, I don't even know how to use this as you can see the toaster the kettle, sorry kettle Actually, you need to push these switches down, then the kettle comes on. So all these, well, you might as well, someone's just turned that off, but these are all turned on. The only thing you've got to do is, like I say, make sure everything's turned off. So that's on, off. Again, throw your toast in there. But when you finish, 
that switch has to be turned so off. Do not leave it on because what it'll do is drain the battery and um, no one will be able to make a cup of cup of tea or a round of toast. Uh, water, as you see is here. I don't know if it's going to be on today. It's cold. We've still got water. First aid kits up there. And there's a, a book um, on, on first aid there as well. If you get any accidents, write them in the book. But yeah, um, we've also got a new table and chairs in here. Uh, we've still got a few do a, a bit of work, um, but for the most part, everything's done. So once again, before I, I knock it on the head, make sure that switch is off and that switch for the lights are off before you leave the community room. Okay, I hope you got all that. So yeah, we've even got the security lights working outside as well. So that's a bonus. The only other thing we need to do now is work on the shop. I need to do the bosses. Um, I was going to do that early in the week until we had the burst and they had to um, put that on hold. And uh, we will come back to that. And then we'll have the lights in the shop as well. So that's the next job. And um, we've still got the paving stones on the well-being plots. We've got halfway down, which we've got, got 90 percent of it done. We just need a little bit more to do. Now, I've had three people promise me that they was going to do it. They've let us down. So it looks like um, Mike and uh, myself are going to have to lay the sand and um, the paving stones, there's only a few of them to drop down, but that's another job for another day. But um, yeah, there's still two, two well-being plots um, left for anybody who's interested in. And um, you can actually apply for one of these uh, well-being plots. They're only £20 each and they're like a quarter plot for walking disabled so you've got to have a blue badge and um, the, the, the these two two plots and the way to to apply to it is to go on to Salford Council's website look under self-managed um, allotments and you'll see us there um, waste allotments and you can leave your details and um, it's the first two we'll get them there's four plots there's already four two been given out but um, there will be more probably come available over the, the coming years. Um, but I, I reiterate, they're not wheelchair um, disabled, they're walking disabled and um, visually impaired. I, I don't think it'd be very good for it's some people who's had heart attacks and stuff like that. It'd be ideal. But there is two plots there wet up for grabs. And uh, first two will get, get the chance to get them. You see the community room, that the community room and the, there's toilets and there's a shop and it's right next to the um, the well-being plots. So it's all been catered around where the well, where the uh, well-being plots is, the shops and everything. Uh, stroke a look um, that the plots are there. But yeah, anyone who wants one, uh, who's you know who lives in the catchment area of Salford, we, we, we can only give plots. Um, to people plots if they live in the catchment area of Salford so you know and um, so yeah there's still two up for grabs anyway um, there'll probably be one or two plots up for grabs shortly because the rents have been going out and uh, there are a few people have uh, given us notice to quit and I think there's about 30 odd people on the waiting list they, sometimes the, the, the lifts, list does shift. I mean, people think it's easy to, to have an allotment and they realise how hard it is and they just, you know, they give up. And um, unfortunately, but the, the main core um, of people tend to stick it out a bit longer. Anyway, I've got one more clip to show you. That's a walk around the plot. You're going to see a bit of our snow. There is a few things there what you're going to notice and we'll tell you a few things what we're going to be doing so let's quickly show you that now well there are my girls one or two of them are still molting as you can see we've got plenty of uh but it's, the snow's turned to ice now and i don't walk on these paths if i did it just wreck them um this is the the garlic elephant garlic and this is these porcelain white some of it uh, took a bit of an hammering, uh, but 
We've got some cabbages over there. Um, you can't really see on this side, but you can see the planters are all coming, firing up now. Greenhouses are closed. I know, you just saw butter cut me. You can't really see when when she's in the on the snow. But um, all the planters and all the beds, all along the beds, you can just see them all the way along there now, all coming up. Uh, everywhere we look here, all, all here is just breaking through the ice. Same here, all the way along. What? I'm busy. Uh, this bed, we can start seeing some of the uh, the, the um, bulbs breaking through just. Um, but the like I say, it's frozen solid today. All these planters, we've got crocuses and daffodils and tulips coming up. Same with the hanging baskets. I am going to replace some of the hanging baskets. i uh, show you the ones I'm going to replace because we've actually got new ones. Again, all these planters are firing up here. I still say that's wonky. Not that one, but that one. <laughs> still, I will fix it eventually. It's not important, but yeah. Again, these hanging baskets have got uh, crocuses in. These are the ones what I'm going to replace. Uh, the linings have gone. So I've got new baskets, as you know. All these planters, all down the back there. You probably just see them over the shadow, but they're all firing up, along with all these ones. Uh, all these planters here. All along the edges. See this here? This is the bloody, um, what's he call it? It's um, blackbirds digging for worms. But all along here, you see the beds firing up. All down that, they should come down this side as well. This is the sedum coming back. Uh, there's actual da daffodil there ready for flowering. Uh, rhubarb's firing up. All the bulbs are coming up in the borders all the way along here now. Um, underneath, well, trust me, the shadows are really bad. But if you look, I don't know if you can see, the crocuses are all breaking through. There they are, there, everywhere. Um, so when I do trim these trees, I've got to be careful not to step on them. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to trim this here and I'm going to put that chair down there. I'm going to sit it, put it there for me to actually sit in the summer months. <laughs> She's a pain, isn't she? All my onions there are doing well. Onions over there are doing well. Solariac, I need to get in there. That, they're, believe it or not, they're okay. I don't walk on the paths. Because it just the, the the what's happened with the frost has expanded the paths. Now there is there is wood chip at the top of the allotments, but it's not very good. So I'm not going to use it. But yeah, all the planters around the ponds are fired up. This is the bed I'm going to be working on. Um, I've got the planks to do the length. I've got the the wood to do the width and the legs in the greenhouse. Um, this netting I'm going to give to my friend Debs. Uh, we've got the wood to do this bed here, so I'm going to be doing that shortly. But you can't do that with the, the, the actual frost. Yeah, this um, bench, I'm going to be using that. And the, these are the blueberries. That's blueberries, blueberries. Uh, quick look down the back here, see the rhubarb. Again, rhubarb starting to fire up all the way along now. I need to get that burning bin up there out and do some burning. It's always been tempting to throw rubbish over there at the back of the plot. But, um, you know, <laughs> he shouldn't and I don't, as you can see. It's uh, just woodland. But um, I tell all the plot holders who back onto this, onto it, do not throw nothing over this fence. 
Um, as you can see, it's, uh, it's just complete woodland. What they used to do, the kids, when it in spring, they used to hide the bikes, motorbikes, what they've stolen down here. It was forever phoning the bloody police uh, for them to come and take them. But all this here, all this you could copy this and use... In fact, I'm looking at some of them there, but I could turn one of them into a nice walking stick, you know what I mean? I don't know if you can see them there. Look at them all here. Now, these are all from this tree here. And they're all saplings. What I'm after, something with a V in so I can rest me, me, me air rifle on it, like a, a rest. I bet I could find one over there. Who knows, one day we might have a walk round and have a look. But yeah, all along the back here, um, um, there is a fallen tree. If you look up there, you probably see a fallen tree. They just dropped it and left it. But anyway, what's she like? Yeah, that's pretty much what the plot's looking like. Clear skies, it's going to be another cold one tonight. This takes a lot of the, uh, the frost off the, um, the, 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 the onions. This, however, all the, all the cabbages are all spent, so we're going to take them all out. And we're going to pile... That compost bin there is collapsing, so we're going to strip that out. I'm going to throw all the compost in here and into that bed when I build the frame. So watch out for that. But if I, I dare walk on them paths now because I just leave big holes where my feet were. Um, so we've got to keep off them for the time being. You know, a lot of the birds chirping away. Nest boxes there, they won't be long before there'll be birds in them. So there we go. That's what the plot's looking like at the moment. Let's get back in the greenhouse. It's warmer in there. So as you saw at the back of the plot there, we've got them big long planks and uh, we're going to make a, a proper brassica cage there. I've got the, the rest of the timber in the front greenhouse. I just need a few screws and I need the weather to change. And um, yeah, I also need some wood chip. Uh, there is wood chip at the top of the allotments, but it's more greens. It's no good. I want the, it's got to be clean wood chip, and um, that was another thing I had to do the other day. Wait for um, Aaron to turn up with his uh, wood chip van. I need to sort a key out for that lad. Uh, there, we have got two, three other wood chippers who drop, um, but they've not been dropping anything for a while. It's the weather, um, you know. <laughs> stuck up a weather cutting a tree down. I suppose it'll keep you warm, but um, it's not keeping them warm, obviously. But yeah, we, he dropped a load, uh, it's at the top of the allotments and um, I did put it up on the Facebook group, so hopefully that'll go pretty quickly. Well, I know it'll go pretty quickly. Anyway, I've talked long enough, I've definitely talked long enough. Buttercup, um, as you can see, is in perfect health here, sat on my knee. Um, she's, she's been a good moggy um, this week. She's not been getting in, into much trouble. I was a bit worried when she come in before I thought she had a mouse in her face but she hasn't unless she's left it outside which she does do anyway thanks for watching um stay safe keep warm and i'll see you back here for some more next week bye for now folks